Hi, and welcome to the simulation step up series. My name is Ramesh Lakshmipati, and I'm a senior technical sales specialist with DASA System Sarux Corporation. Now, in this presentation, we'll review part three of modeling pole connectors in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So let's get started. Let's now look at how SOLIDWORKS simulation connector results compares to what we might expect if we were doing calculations on simple systems. So that way we can have the confidence while dealing with more complex systems. Let's start with a simple two plate model as shown. The first step is to create a bolded connection between the two plates and put that bolt in a shear scenario by applying 100 pound load as shown. Now here is a schematic diagram that basically shows what's going on behind the scenes. The two plates are represented, the nut and head contact faces are represented by the horizontal lines that can slide as the components can slide. Now remember that the faces are assumed to stay in contact between the bolt and the part, but the two parts can still slide. The ends of the bolts are actually assumed to remain normal to the contact faces, thus putting that moment at the end of the bolt. That moment is calculated by the applied load and the distance from the center of the bolt to the contact face. Here's a quick snapshot of the displacement result, which looks reasonably okay, but it's not so exciting or interesting. So now when that bolt is put in 100 pounds of shear, the bolt connector results in the table shown clearly shows that the shear force is about 100 pounds, which is what we would expect. And we do have also a bending moment of roughly about 25 pounds that corresponds with the quarter inch plate thickness times 100 times the 100 pound shear load. So as you can see, the results from SOLIDWORKS simulation matches very well. And in a pure shingle, single shear scenario, we can confidently say that the pole connector is giving us the expected results. Now, comparing this to a simple physical model, we actually put a solid plug or a solid bolt having the diameter that is that we specified inside the bolt connector for, for the shank, and then using a rigid connector to tie the top face of the bolt plug to the component uh, one head contact face. So comparing this to a simple physical model where we actually put a solid plug or a solid bolt having the same shank diameter used in the bolt connector definition, and then using a rigid connector to tie the top face of the bolt plug to the component bolt head contact face as well as the component nut contact face as shown here. We, you can see that we get very similar responses in both, uh, both scenarios. So with the bolt connector, you can see the max displacement or the maximum displacement is about 0 0.0128 inches. And using a solid plug along with the rigid connector, the displacements are more or less the same. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. So here's the setup where a bolt connector actually has been used. Let's go ahead and see what the definition looks like. So again, we're using a standard bolt and nut arrangement uh, with a head diameter of 0.59 inches and a shank diameter of about 0.25 inches. The material is 1023 carbon steel. And again, here we're not applying any preload data just for comparison purposes. Now, the results of this in terms of displacement shows us about 0 0.0128 uh, inches as we discussed in the presentation. Now, I'm going to switch to the setup where we actually got rid of the bolt connector and instead use the physical geometry of the bolt itself. So you can see that it's a simple, very simplified form or version of the bolt geometry, just representing the shank diameter and the shank length. And what we're doing here is we are using rigid connections to tie the uh, bolt plug with the uh, contact faces, the head contact, the bolt head contact face and the nut contact faces. So here on the top side, we have, you know, uh, a rigid connection representing that scenario for the bolt head and at the bottom we have a very similar definition representing uh, the nut contact face. So if I go ahead and look at the displacement here and then use the compare tool uh, 
to compare the two results side by side, uh, that will clearly show us again, once again, uh, that the displacements are more or less exactly the same. So bottom line is that the results do not differ much, but the bolt connector loads are significantly easier to extract when you use the, bol uh, the bolted connection option versus using a solid model for the bolt. So I think this shows that you can get very good results in shear using the bolt connector. And again, we're not losing anything over trying to model more complex physical contact systems. Now, taking the same problem using the bolt connector using a tight fit option, and then comparing that to using a solid bolt plug itself, we can see that the results are just slightly different. The tight fit bolt connector has a smaller displacement in shear, roughly about 1.5% difference than the physical part model in with contacts. Now, this difference might seem very small, but again, keep in mind, this is a very simplistic problem that we're talking about here, but in reality, this can actually scale up uh, for a more complex loading scenario and stiffness variations of the connected parts. Now, one interesting difference though is when you look at the actual deformation of the parts, the image on the, on the top right shows an exaggerated displacement using the tight fit bolted connection. And the point to note here is that the holes retain their cylindrical shape because of the tight fit connector that makes the holes really very rigid. In reality, it's not the case. So when we actually put the bolt geometry itself and use that uh, in the simulation, you can see the hole deformation is more realistic as expected, just because of the fact that now we have introduced some elasticity and some movement uh, in those parts. So bottom line is again suggesting the fact that if you're expecting the shank to take most of the shear and understanding that physical scenario around the bolt shank contact area might be critical to make design decisions, you may actually want to consider using a solid bolt plug instead of the bolt connector. So far, we have seen a simple example of a bolt and shear and also seen how SOLIDWORK simulation correlates or works really well in those situations. Now, let's take a look at how SOLIDWORK simulation bolt connectors compares to estimated calculations of a bolt in tension. So using a simple tension system like these D-shaped parts, a single bolt is applied to the holes in the center using the bolt connector. Now, a 100-pound load is applied to the part on the uh, left side and then on the right side part we apply we fix the cylindrical face or cylindrical hole rather as shown once the setup is run the bolt connector results clearly show that the axial force in the bolt is about 100 pounds as expected and the deformation clearly also shows that there is no appreciable bending or shear as again one might expect because the hole is centrally located. Here is the model inside SOLIDWORKS. A couple of things I would like to point out is number one, the bolt definition. So we're using a standard bolt nut scenario, same head and nut diameter, which is 0.4 inches. The sh bolt shank diameter is 0.2 inches. The material of the bolt is 1023 carbon steel. And in this scenario, we are not actually using any preload condition. One important aspect of using bolt connections is to understand that the bolt does not constrain or fully constrain the geometry of the connected parts. So what that means is, for example, the part here on the right side has a fixed constraint applied to that cylindrical hole, and so that should take care of any rigid body motions on this part. However, this part over here on the left side has only the force acting on it, and, and it's connected to the other part through the bolt connection. So what might happen is if you set it up and run the problem the way it is, it's going to come up with an error message uh, regarding the rigid body motion on the highlighted part. And in this case, scenario, uh, the rigid body motion is nothing but the rotation about the bolt axis or with respect to the global corner system, we're talking about that rigid body rotation about the global x-axis. So it's important to understand that uh, if you don't constrain the geometry correctly, assuming that the bolt connection is going to do it for you, 
uh, you got to make sure that uh, you know you address that before you run the analysis so what I've done here is for example just grab a couple of points on the uh, unconstrained part and made sure that the rigid body rotation about the bolt axis is is taken care of now coming back to the results uh, here's a deformation result and a quick animation showing that the bolt uh, connection is working correctly and the, the system is actually behaving in a purely tensile way there is no shear or appreciable bending that we can see in this animation we can also take a look at the connector force the bolt connector force and clearly in this case we are applying an external load of 100 pound that completely reacts or the bolt takes on that 100 pound load um, entirely and you can see that over here which is shown as part of the axial force uh, uh, row. There's no appreciable bending, there's no shear force, which is as expected. Putting a preload on the bolt gives us a slightly different response, and so let's take a look at some common calculations for estimating the preload required to get a permanent connection that can withstand the load needed. It's typically estimated that the guideline preload for a permanent connection should be about 90% of the proof load or the proof strength of the bolt. The proof load can be calculated using the equation as shown here. Now here's the calculation for a grade five bolt, but this can be in a quarter inch diameter and you can use the same thing for your bolts, uh, whatever dimensions you might be using and that makes sense for the particular application. So going through these numbers, we can come up with a preload requirement of about 2430 pounds so here's a handbook reference where you can actually find the above equations for calculating the preloads so when that 2430 pound is applied to the system we looked at previously the results of stress and displacements do show that we have a pretty reasonable behavior or response in the system. The system is showing deformations in a way we would expect, and so taking it further, a contact pressure plot does show that we have a square-shaped contact area with higher contact pressure towards the center of the bolt. This is exactly what we would expect in this particular system. And also looking at the bolt connection forces, you can very well see that the axial force in the bolt matches the preload in the bolt, which is about 24, 30 pounds. Now, keep in mind that a mesh control in the contact area will always help to get a more uniform and a more accurate contact pressure distribution and also ensure that uh, the bolt axial loads are as realistic as possible. Now, this is just looking uh, at using the preload only scenario with the 100 pound loads applied. Now, to determine the failure load or the load required to actually separate a bolt with preload, both the joint and the bolt stiffnesses are required. We'll take a look at the joint diagrams next. However, for those of you who have used the joint diagrams, you probably know that the joint stiffness uh, is needed, which is basically the local compressive stiffness of the area around the joint. As an example, a compressive load equivalent or the preload can be applied to the actual part where the bolt is connected. And then the compressive displacement can be read in through simulation. And then the calculated stiffness is nothing but the force divided by that displacement and that eventually gives us the joint stiffness. Now the bolt stiffness is calculated by using standard spring stiffness calculations per rod, which is the stiffness of the bolt is equal to the area multiplied by the elastic modulus over the length of the bolt. So based on the data, we can actually come up with the bolt stiffness as well. Now, once we come up with both, both these stiffness values, we can put that into a standard giant diagram as shown. And again, this can be found in a number of references. 
but what this is telling us is or allows us to do rather is estimate how much load will cause separation of the bolt based on the preload extension and the giant compression so the blue line here on the right represents the load that should actually cause the giant to separate in this case just using graphical means a separation load was estimated at about 2950 pounds and so this sort of diagram can actually be very helpful to determine whether the giant is a giant is acceptably model or not now we can take that 2950 pound separation load and apply it to the bolted assembly that we were looking at before now first of all here is a screenshot of the principal stress uh, 3 which is mostly showing us the compressive areas really very well and the contact pressure plot and and here the load is less than the separation load so just to compare that with uh, the scenario where we apply the separation load of 2950 pound you can very well see how in comparison uh, the principal stress and the contact pressure plot look like so you can see that for example the contact pressure you can see uh, literally there is no contact uh, between the uh, the connected parts in terms of the principal stresses you can basically see that the compressive load in the system or the compressive stress at the joint location is very 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 small all right we covered a lot of ground today regarding bolt connections and solid simulation and so here's a quick presentation summary uh, we did explore the use of bolt connectors and how it can be used to represent bolted joints uh, we also reviewed some of the inherent assumptions made, it, made in each connector type. Uh, we looked at a couple of, you know, simplistic examples to see how the bolt connector output compares favorably to known scenarios or empirical data. The concept of giant diagrams was finally introduced as a means to estimate separation loads for bolt sizing, including some preliminary preload calculations. It's also important to understand that the bolt connector formulation is an approximation of a complex nonlinear behavior. So it's accurate when the bolts are really under tension. Under compressive loads, the axial forces may not be that realistic or accurate. Uh, a decrease in preload uh, bolt force can result in the loosening of the bolt and the loss of contact between the bolt and the components. The above behavior cannot be really captured by the bolt connector formulation in solid simulation so for these cases it's recommended that you model the actual bolt geometry and define a contact condition between the bolts and the components that concludes this presentation if you want more information regarding this particular topic bolt connectors in solid simulation contact your local solidworks reseller for a more in-depth training or support on this particular topic you can also review the online help for a more detailed description of the features discussed today. All right, that concludes this presentation. You can watch this presentation as well as several other presentations as part of the Simulation Step Up series on the Simulation YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks and have a great day.